They've been lying to you about Santa Claus. We're going to dig into some real-life stories about the man in red right after this on the Manlyhood Mancast. To be a good man, you have to learn and grow. You have to be bold and stand firm on your convictions. You have to live with honor and integrity. This is the Manlyhood Mancast. Here's your host, Josh Atcher. Welcome to the Manlyhood Mancast. I'm your host, Josh Hatcher. And I tell you what, I've really been enjoying doing some holiday broadcasts for you. This is one of my favorites that I've been preparing and planning on, and I can't wait to talk to you about it. I have always loved the idea of Santa Claus. Now, I want you to know, when I was working with my kids and they were growing up, I did not teach them that Santa Claus was real. I taught him that he was a real person. St. Nicholas was a real person. And that there were all kinds of crazy myths and legends about him that have grown and turned into something different. And those things are all fun to pretend about and to play with. But... It wasn't Santa Claus that was bringing them presents on Christmas morning. Now, I know, caught a lot of flack for that decision. I'm okay with that. But what we did do is we always loved exploring the truths about St. Nicholas and some of the stories that may or may not be legend or history, but they're still stories about him, about the real person that really kind of made him even better than a fat, jolly guy that swings down your chimney. So let's talk about some of those. Jolly old Saint Nick is a little bit different than uh, what we see in the Christmas cards, I believe. First of all, there was that time that Santa Claus hit a heretic in the face. So there was a, a religious debate going on, and one man decided to deny that God, or that Jesus was God, that Jesus was divine. And that was too much for Saint Nicholas. So he walked over to the guy and punched him in the face. <laughs> Uh, Supposedly, it was Arius from Egypt who was teaching that Jesus was not uh, God, that being the son was not equal to being God. And I understand some people are like, I I don't care about that. Well, St. Nicholas cared about that. (laughs) And he couldn't believe and couldn't bear hearing Arius lie about the person he loved more than anybody else. So he walked across the room and he either slapped or punched, not quite sure which happened there, but punched him right across the face and gave him a bloody nose. (laughs) so i'll tell you i don't necessarily condone hauling off and smacking somebody who disagrees with your theology but at the same time part of me kind of respects saint nick a little bit more knowing that he was very passionate about what he believed the other time that saint nick really proved his goodness actually is uh one of the origins of the legend of the stocking He basically saved three daughters from being sold into prostitution. So 300 AD was a different time in those days. No respectable person would marry a woman who didn't have a gift from her father, a monetary gift from her father. So if the father couldn't pay for the dowry, the woman was often sold into slavery or prostitution. It was a different time and customs were different. And I don't want to really excuse things, though, because honestly, it was just barbaric to basically sell your daughter. (laughs) Only you didn't get anything out of it. But it was barbaric. It was a mess. So there was a man who used to be rich, had fallen on hard times, and he was poor with three daughters who were all of age to be married. And honestly, back in those days, of age to be married was a lot younger than it is today. And honestly, maybe even to a disturbing degree. So... St. Nick had heard that because the father couldn't afford dowries, that they were going to be sold into slavery or prostitution. And so he snuck in by their house at night and tossed a bag of gold into the window, and it landed in a stocking that was hung by the fire to dry. And the first daughter then was able to be wed. Rescuing damsels in distress, that's a pretty manly thing to do. Ending sex slavery, that's also a pretty manly thing to do. Another story about Saint Nick, about the man in red that I love, is the time he solved a grisly murder and did a miracle. So in order to be considered a saint, according to Catholic tradition, a person has to have performed documented miracles. So regardless whether you believe that those miracles are true, stories like this are very interesting. I do believe in supernatural miracles. I've seen many myself. (laughs) Um... 
No, I'm okay if you think that if you think that makes me crazy. I really am. I've seen him. I can't deny him. The St. Nicholas story. There were three children who came into a lighted butcher shop and they asked, we're hungry and we're lost. Can we eat and sleep here? And the butcher said, sure, come on in. And as they entered, the butcher takes a sharp knife and cuts them up and puts them in a large salting tub. Seven years later, St. Nicholas shows up. He's now a bishop. And he knocks on the door and he tells the butcher to open up his large salting tub. And then he puts his hand on the tub and says, rise up, children. And the little children wake up and stand up and their families joyfully welcome them home. Now, whether or not the, ha- the story actually happened is irrelevant, but it's still a pretty cool story, right? It's cool to think of Santa Claus doing actual good in the world, not just giving kids cheap plastic toys and way too much chocolate. I think Santa would actually be pretty ticked off about the chocolate industry these days anyway, because I know that they often hire slaves to pick their cocoa beans in other parts of the world. That's not cool. He wouldn't like that. Another story I love about St. Nicholas is the time that he told a storm to take a chill pill and it listened. So actually, if you didn't know this, St. Nicholas is the patron saint of sailors and probably has to do with this story. So he had a vision that a violent storm was coming, and although no one else suspected it, he warned the crew, and all of a sudden the sky went black and the clouds the sky went black and the clouds appeared, and this storm rose up. The sea was churning, everybody was afraid, and they were all begging Nicholas to rescue them, and they said, Pray to God to save us, or we'll be swallowed up by the sea. So Nicholas encouraged the people to put their hope into God, and then he prayed to the Lord. And as he prayed, he asked God to calm the waters and the waters just went calm. And the passengers were like, what in the world? And then a fair wind picked up and it filled the sails and the boat sailed off to Alexandria in Egypt. If this story sounds familiar, something very similar happened to Jesus in the New Testament. And like I've said before, regardless of what you believe about miracles, it's still a pretty cool story. It's not unusual for the followers of Jesus to do the same kinds of miracles that Jesus did. Jesus spoke of all authority being given to him, and that he then told his followers that he was giving them all authority. So Nicholas didn't know Jesus personally because he was born much later. So he didn't physically had had never met Jesus, but he chose to walk away from a life of luxury to live a life of charity and kindness and goodwill. So he was a privileged kid who decided to follow the path of Jesus. So it makes sense that that same authority would apply, right? Nicholas wasn't some soft, fat guy sitting at the mall with a hundred kids making demands. If he spoke with authority so strongly that winds and waves shut up at his request... Maybe we should strive for that kind of authority in our lives. Speak boldly to the frightening circumstances in your life and tell them to shut the hell up. St. Nicholas is definitely a superhero of sorts. And while the myths and the fables that we hear about him, especially Santa Claus, are certainly a lot of fun, the myths and and legends and maybe even truths about the real St. Nicholas are even more intriguing, I think. I love this man, and I love what he represents, and I hope that I can be anywhere nearly as manly as the man in red. Anyway, I love you guys, I care about you guys, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Hey man, I see you. I see your fire going out. I see your marriage barely holding on. I know you're broke, wore out, and at the end of your rope. I've been there. It sucks. Sucks the spark right out of you. Till all you have is a pile of wet wood. It feels like it's never gonna burn. I can't fix your problems. I can't make her love you again. I can't lose 50 pounds for you or fill your bank account. But I can remind you of who you are. I can share some of my fire. I can help you make a plan to get your life back on track. So let's go. Let's do this. Let's reignite our lives. There's a lot at stake. No one wants their marriage to end in divorce. No one wants to wallow in despair or to the dark places that follow. So let's do it. Let's reignite our lives. Let's reignite our passion, our marriage, our health, our career, our dreams, our mindset. Get reignite today. If 
you want to be a better man, check out our website, manlyhood.com, for blogs, videos, and more from our Manlyhood team. Men, you can also join our private Facebook group, Manlyhood Man Cave, where you can meet up with a band of brothers who will challenge you and help you on your journey of manhood. This episode is produced by Hatcher Media for Manlyhood.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to the show. Tune in again for more of the Manlyhood Mancast.